Hello everyone, this is Al, Red Sox fan, coming to you from Al, Red Sox fan, YouTube channel, hope all is well. We're going to bring you some Legends of Boxing PC game. Two-ton Tony Galento takes on Ozzy Ocasio, 12 rounds, heavyweights, USBA title eliminator. Saturday night fights from Roosevelt Stadium, Jersey City, New Jersey. The main event, the popular... New Jersey native two-ton Tony Galento takes on the stylish Puerto Rican Ozzy Ocasio. The winner is scheduled to get a shot at the USBA heavyweight champion, George Foreman. Two bouts that we will give you prior to the main event. We'll start off with Fireman Jim Flynn taking on the Butterbean, Eric Butterbean Esh, 10 rounds heavyweights. The Butterbean looking for her, his first victory in our universe. Then, a battle of very hard punchers. Mac Foster, Bernardo Mercado. Don't blink with this one. Ten rounds heavyweights. We'll see if it even goes that long. On the non-radio broadcast bouts, here in New Jersey, night of heavyweights, Bob Sattersfield, destroyed Brian O'Malley in one round, stopping him 238 of the first round. So one New Jersey native goes down to defeat. Giant Jack O'Halloran defeated Tom McNeely out of Massachusetts, unanimous decision via points. So New Jersey gets a victory there. Randy Newman, another New Jersey pugilist, defeated Peter McNeely when the younger McNeely, son of Tom, could not answer the bell for round five. Mel Turnbow, always a fan favorite here and around the country, beat Mark Gasnell, split decision, 90, uh, uh, Gasnell 96-95 on one card, then Turnbow 97-94, 97-94, Gasnell scored the only knockdown in that fight. Gasno was hurt each and every round, but he survived the 10-round distance. Elijah Tillery against another Puerto Rican heavyweight, Jose Roman. They battled to a draw. Those were the cards. Uh, those were the bouts on the card that do not have the radio broadcast. We now will go to our first radio broadcast fight. And it will be Fireman Jim Flynn out of Hoboken, New Jersey. In our universe, three wins, one loss, three stoppages. His loss via points. Overall record in reality, 65, 45, 21. So that's 65 wins, 45 losses, 21 draws, 51 via stoppage. He can pop, but you can also hit him. His chin's not so bueno, so... Sh this should be another exciting contest. He's a dirty fighter. Endurance is average at best. Power is a 7. Defense non-existent. Control edge most likely will be a slight edge, possibly to Eric Butterbean Ash. The fireman Flynn likes to throw everything and throw it hard. Eric Butterbean Ash, 0-8-1. He has eight losses, no wins, one draw. He is looking for his first victory in our universe. He has fought many, many a fine pugilist in Legends of Boxing, giving them all tough tussles, but not coming away with a victory. Ash from Jasper, Alabama, has a good chin. Endurance similar to Fireman Jim Flynn. Power, slight edge to Esh over the first two rounds, but he tires quite quickly. After two rounds, his power starts to diminish and diminish by half. So here we go. Can Butterbean Esh pick up his first win? Or will Fireman Jim Flynn pick up win number four? It's Hoboken, New Jersey, taking on Jasper, Alabama from Roosevelt Stadium, Jersey City, New Jersey. Ten rounds, heavyweights. Sold out stadium. 
for Saturday night, New Jersey heavyweight night. Jim Flynn will be in the red corner. Eric Butterbean Ash in the blue. Ash will have a slight advantage in control. They get their final instructions from the referee. As both one another stare each other in the eye. Ash will definitely have the edge in girth and most likely strength, but Fireman Jim Flynn fought the great Jack Johnson with no fear in reality. He thinks he can knock anybody out. He did stop Tony Galento, who's in the main event. Fighters touch gloves. They go to their neutral corner. I mean, they go to their corners. We await the bell. Here's the bell for round number one. Butterbean. Pressing uh, forward, now moving back a bit. Let's Flynn come to him. Ash will throw. Lands a lead right cross on the fireman. Good shot by Butterbean Ash. Flynn works his way on the inside. Bangs away with body shots on the girthy underbelly of Eric Butterbean Ash. That's where Flynn wants to fight this bout on the inside. That's what he's doing. Ash tries to smother him. Ash shoves him away. Butterbean again. Lands a couple of glancing blows. They did score, though. 159 to go here in round number one. Ash looking to land that big right hand. And there it is! Two jabs and a booyah right! Flynn is in big trouble. Flynn staggers back towards the ropes. Eric Butterbean Ash sensing his first victory. Looks to finish Jim Flynn. Eric Butterbean Ash pounding away. Flynn seems defenseless on the ropes. He's taking shot after shot. Hard shots to the body and up to the head. Flynn is badly hurt. Butterbean Ash measuring. One jab, two jabs, missed with the right hand. A big, big round one for Eric Butterbean Ash. We have under a minute to go here from Roosevelt Stadium. Ash still has Flynn trapped on those ropes, banging away with hooks at Flynn's body. 34 seconds to go. Flynn tries to fight off the ropes. Lands a lead right. Missed with the left hook. Both shots to the head. Eight seconds at the bell. It's Flynn fighting off the ropes, throwing four punches, landing two. The round goes in our eyes to Eric Butterbean Ash. Joining us at ringside, Evengi Crosby. How you doing? Round two is upon us. The bell in the Flynn corner. They want him to get inside Work the body, a very big body, of the Butterbean. The Butterbean's corner. Stay on the outside. He's going to come to you. Smack the snot out of him. The bell for round number two. Flynn works his way past Butterbean's jab. He's in tight. Flynn hooks to the body. Solid shots into the rib cage of the Butterbean. Can Flynn continue the assault? He stays inside tight. Left hook, right hook, left hook. The third left hook was to the jaw and facial area of Eric Butterbean Ash. Blood coming from the mouth of Butterbean. Flynn looking to get his pound of flesh. Ash pushes him away, lands a lead right. Missed the left hook, though. Flynn stays low. Flynn bores in like a honey badger, smacking away to the body and head. That caught Ash's attention. Flynn looking to come back after taking a serious beating in round one. Ash looking to knock him out. Ash, right hand, left hook. And Flynn is down. Flynn is down. Ash is ushered to the neutral corner. The referee picks up the count at five from the timekeeper. Six, seven, eight, nine. Flynn just barely beats the count. He is absolutely groggy. Ash looking to finish him off. He's got plenty of time. Flynn does not look in good shape. They wipe his gloves. Referee says, do you want to go? Flynn nods his head. Butterbean comes in for the kill. Banging away with hooks to the body and up to the head. Flynn back to the ropes. Butterbean missed the right hand. Land the left to the body. Butterbean has Flynn pinned to those ropes. Butterbean right hand, left hook. Another left hook to the jaw. Flynn badly hurt on the ropes. Staggers into the ropes. The ropes kept him up. Referee looking to jump in. Butterbee pounding away body and head. Flynn is down. Flynn is down. For a second time here in round number two. Butterbee to the neutral corner. Referee picks up the count from the timekeeper at eight, nine, ten. It is over. Eric Butterbee Ash. As the crowd goes wild. Even though Flynn is from Hoboken, New Jersey. Butterbean has many a fan in the area. 
even some fans traveling from Alabama. So Eric Butterbean Ash picks up his first win in our Legends of Boxing universe, crushing Fireman Jim Flynn. Flynn started off a little better in round number two, but it was the power of the Butterbean that crushed the Fireman. The official time, Esh, your winner by knockout, with only four seconds left in round number two. The 10 count was reached at 2.56 of the round. So Eric Butterbean Esh is victorious. I told you not to blink for these first two bouts. The fans are abuzzed here at Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City, New Jersey. The ringside score gave the first round to Esh as we did. Second round, well, it's academic. The butter bean knocked out the fireman. Let's quickly go to the recap. You can see Flynn was down for a nine count earlier in round two. Stuck on the ropes, took a beating until he was knocked out with four seconds left in round two. In that brief encounter between these two pugilists, Eric Butterbean Ash landed 31 murderous punches compared to the fireman Jim Flynn's 12. We will now move on to the co-main event. Mac Foster taking on Bernardo Mercado. Mac Foster from the U.S., Bernardo Macardo, the hard-punching Colombian heavyweight, Monterey, Monterey, Colombia. In actuality, his record 33-5-0 with 28 stoppages. Had he had beaten Leon Spinks, would have probably got a shot at Larry Holmes. Instead, Leon Spinks, an underdog, I do believe, in that fight. I remember watching it. Knocked out Bernardo Macardo, and he got the title shot against Larry Holmes would be stopped by the excellent boxer Hall of Famer Larry Holmes. In our world, Bernardo Macardo is 2-2. Two and two. He has one win via stoppage, one win via majority points. He's been KO'd once and stopped on cuts the other time. For Mac Foster, another Hoboken, New Jersey heavyweight, Foster a murderous puncher if he can hit you. He had more success against the second the, the tier just below the top-notch heavyweights of his day. Record in actuality, 30 wins, 6 defeats, no draws. All of his wins were by stoppage. In our universe, he is 0-1. He lost in our heavyweight tournament. He looks to try to take out Bernardo Mercado and possibly get in that USBA title pitcher that our main event is a title eliminator for, Galento and Acasio, the winner. Down the road should be facing George Foreman who, or whatever pugilist will hold the United States Boxing Association heavyweight title. It's a very important title. Big stepping stone to a possible world championship shot. Our current world heavyweight champion is Joe Lewis. So Mac Foster, endurance, slight edge compared to Bernardo Macardo. Punching power. Very big puncher. Mercado, no slouch of his own. He can bang. But Foster, if he has you hurt, a better finisher than Mercado. But Mercado, he knows what he's doing. These guys will stand and bang. Don't blink in this one either, folks. Both fighters are in the rings, in the ring, awaiting the final instructions from the referee. To ringside we go here at Roosevelt Stadium. Jersey City, New Jersey. Mac Foster out of the red corner. Has a big big contingent of fans here. Again, from Hoboken, New Jersey. Bernardo Mercado. Those cheering for him will be in his corner. He is from Columbia. What a stare down we have. Foster stares into Mercado's eyes. Mercado stares right back. Murder in both of their eyes. That's what it seems. Any questions from the Chief Seconds? There are none from either corner. Referee says touch gloves. They reluctantly touch gloves. 
Foster back to the red corner. Mercado back to the blue. We await the bell. Round number one, the bell. Mercado rages right out against Foster. Action ring center, toe-to-toe -to -toe warfare. Mercado looking to bang away. Lands a chopping right hand. Short hook into the ribs of Mac Foster. Both fighters faint, jostle for position, now move away. They circle one another, now come forward once again at ring center. But it's Mercado letting his hands go. Bernardo, left hook to the body, solid right to the chin of Mac Foster. Foster is down! Foster is down! Mac Foster is down! Mercado goes to the neutral corner. Referee picks up the count at five from the timekeeper. Seven. Foster slowly begins to rise. He'll take the mandatory eight. From the Mercado corner, they're, they're screaming in Spanish or Colombian finish him off finish him off we're getting that through the interpreter referee says do you want to go Mac Foster nods his head referee wipes the gloves Mercado comes in for the kill Mercado furiously banging away at Foster who's dangerously close to those ropes Foster trying to cover up Mercado again is landing but not effectively Foster moves away from the ropes Foster stands his ground. Mercado moves forward, and Foster lands a 1-2 into the ribs of Bernardo Mercado. Good, solid shots. Foster doesn't look like he's cleared his head yet. Under a minute to go here in round number one. Mercado looking to land the booyah right. Two jabs, and the right hand missed. Mercado again looking to land the big right hand. Solid combination. Foster was able to parry away the head blows, though. Final seconds here in round number one. Foster looks like he will survive the knockdown. Foster looks to throw, bangs the body at the bell. Foster's head is not clear. He gingerly goes back to his corner. Illuminaries at ringside, Avengi Crosby, Bernard Strom, Alan Barry, Steeler fan 1933. Thank you for joining us. As Alan Barry says, just got here from Kansas City. Well, in our eyes, that was a 10-8 round for Bernardo Macardo as he dropped Mac, Fa Mac Foster with the first solid right he landed. Foster is getting encouragement from his corner, but his eyes say something different. He has doubt, doubt in his eyes. Macardo has blood, blood of a shark. He smells blood. Round two, the bell. Here we go. Mercado races out towards Foster. Foster meets him at ring center. Mercado, two jabs and a solid right hand. Puffing up the left eye of Mac Foster. Foster in all kinds of bad shape. Mercado looking to tee off. Foster having trouble seeing a jab, another jab, then a right into the body, followed by a left into the body by Mercado. Foster looks to fire back. Big uppercut, then the left hook. Good solid shots by Mac Foster. This is phone booth aggressive warfare for two heavyweights ring center. They tie up. They bang away with their free hand. Referees having trouble prying these two big heavyweights apart. About a minute 38 to go here in round number two. Mercado looking to fight on the inside. Beautiful combination by Bernardo Mercado. Two shots to the head, two shots to the body. Then he comes up with a left hook. Mac gives ground, now tries to stand his ground, but it's Mercado punching away. A jab and a solid right hand. Some blood near the left eye of Mac Foster. He's dealing with swelling. He's dealing with blood. He's dealing with a blurry head as he is being knocked around like a pinata. Foster looks to load up. Foster lands a good right cross. Mercado... Takes a little sidestep. He felt that punch. About 30 seconds to go here in round two. Mercado comes back. Faints the jab. Booyah! Right hand, left hook. Another right hand by Mercado. That left eye is getting busted up pretty bad. The left eye of Mac Foster. Foster blinking. That blood is bothering him. Foster loads up. Foster bangs away. Four punch salvo. Now a fifth punch at the bell. Two to the body, three to the head. Mercado tried to tie him up as Foster came forward, but Foster was able to land a little right uppercut, a sneaky punch, snapping the head of the man from Columbia. I don't think it was enough to give that round to Mac Foster, though. We give it to Bernardo Mercado. Again, our scorecard unofficial. More Illuminaries joining us here. Legend Sports Universe has joined us. Check out that wonderful channel. I'm looking to have Legend Sports Universe on a chat with Al. 
our prior chat with Al, which we were going to do, uh, not with uh, Legend Sports Universe, but with someone else, uh, fell out, so we didn't have the chat with Al on Thursday. But uh, next, if that happens again with anybody, we'll just go on without a guest. Roger Ramjet, how you doing? Five bucks on Foster, looks like uh, down the drain. You never know, Foster can punch. His confidence is waning, though, Roger. The bell for round number three. Foster looking to stay on the outside, trying to give the coagulant some time to work. He, his left eye is a mess. Foster looking to lose the jab. Two jabs land, then the right hand catch Mercado. Good job by Foster. Foster has some boxing ability. Mercado works his way past the jab as the blood starts to flow again from the damaged left eye all around the left eye of Mac Foster. Mercado. Left hook, solid right hand to the jaw of Mac Foster. Foster backs up. Foster trying to move side to side. Mercado easily gets inside. Bangs away with a left right and another left hook under the elbows of Mac Foster. Foster trying to keep a tight defense, but those ribs are going to hurt with those big shots from Bernardo Mercado. Foster looks to bang. Foster, one jab, two jabs, but he's very reluctant, very reluctant, to throw the right. He does not want to engage. Foster throws a jab. Mercado slips it. Mercado bangs a left hook to the body. Foster ties him up. Now they shove each other away. Foster back at distance. Mercado quickly closes. Nice little step move he made. And left hook, right uppercut. The left hook was into the ribs. The right uppercut snaps the head of Mac Foster. Foster back on his bicycle. It's a very slow bicycle. Foster again looks to land the right. That's the best combination Foster's thrown this round. He threw the, the left then the right to the body, left hook to the head. Nice job by Mac Foster. Under 30 seconds to go here in round three. Foster gaining some confidence. Foster, a jab. There's the right hand. They've been calling for that right hand from the Foster corner. Final seconds coming up here in round number three. Foster letting his hands go. Foster feints the right, left hook on the jaw of Mercado. And Mercado is down. Mercado is down. Foster to the neutral corner. Referee picks up the count at six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is over. It is over. A bloody and battered Mac Mark. Um, excuse me. The excitement has gotten to me. Mac Foster comes back to knock out Bernardo Mercado in stunning fashion. It was a brutal war for three very violent rounds here, Roosevelt Stadium, Jersey City, New Jersey. Un. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Mac Foster on the verge of defeat looked in the bowels of Hades and said, I ain't going there tonight. A huge left hook departed Bernardo Mercado from his feet, from his senses. The 10 count gives Mac Foster the victory. As the bell rung, who did the bells tome, tome for? Is that the phrase? The bells tomed for Bernardo Mercado, singling the end of the Colombian. He is still out on the canvas. A bloody Mac Foster to the joys and cheers of many a Hoboken, New Jersey native here at Roosevelt Stadium, rejoicing in victory with Mac Foster. So a huge win. I mean, how good does Mac Foster feel right now? It looked like it was all but over. He had been down in the first, battered in the second, was being battered in the third. But down the stretch, that final minute, Foster staying on the outside, got into a rhythm. Mercado got a little a little uh, lackadaisical with no fear. Mercado was just walking forward, looking to bang out Mike, uh, Mac Foster. I want to call him Mike Foster. It's Mac Foster. Foster caught Mercado. It was a beautiful feint. He feinted the right hand. Mercado moved, and he walked right into one of the prettiest left hooks that you'll ever see. Mercado still down on the canvas. The doctor is taking a look on him. We do see Mercado moving. He's acknowledging the the, the, the one you know the, the finger movement. Now they're starting to get Mercado up very slowly. But what a huge win for Mac Foster. Wow. I told you, don't blink in these first two bouts. They lived up. They might have been short, but they were violent. And that's what the fans want. They want to see action. 
and they're getting it here. Saturday Night Fights, Roosevelt Stadium, Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. What joy to call these radio fights in our universe. Roger Ramjet says he's cashing in his cha-ching as he had given up, but Mac Foster gave him faith once again. Legend Sports Universe says, listening to you as I work on the database to get my soccer league going. Very cool. What game are you using for that? Wow. So let's just quickly, I mean, it's again, it's academic. It's a knockout victory for Mac Foster, who, in my eyes, lost the first two rounds. And again, I have it exactly the same as the ringside score. Ricardo dropped him in the first, nearly took him out in the first. Did a lot of damage to him in the second. Really, two-thirds of the round in round three went to Ricardo. But Mac Foster stayed on the outside and got something going. Legend Sports Universe says he's going to be using Football Manager 2023 for his soccer project. Very cool. Let's check out the report. And Ricardo actually out uh, punch point. Again, it's not punches landed. It's punch points. Uh, the, the, the effect, how effective the punches were landed. You're given points. Again, so Mac Foster was down for a seven count in the first. Ricardo nearly finished him, but couldn't. Punch point wise, it seemed like a close second, but Foster rallied a bit at the end. Foster really, in my eyes, lost the first two minutes. And again, it doesn't matter. He knocked out Ricardo as the final seconds uh, were the final seconds of the fight, uh, round three. Ricardo is knocked out with the 10 count. Ricardo had an excellent start, dominated the first two minutes. And Foster just got into a rhythm. He saw something, I guess, and it was the right hand. He fainted it. Mercado, with reckless abandon, not considering defense, just was trying to walk through Foster, and he got clipped with a left hook. Down he went. Good night, Irene, the winner, Mac Foster. Now we will move to the main event. 12 rounds. This is a United States Boxing Association title eliminator, or at least that's what it's being billed as. The winner is going to be given a shot, not necessarily the next shot at the USBA title, but will be given a shot at George Foreman if he is the USBA title. It could be his next title defense. 12 rounds. Tony Galento, popular two-ton Tony from Orange, New Jersey, takes on the stylish Puerto Rican Ozzy Ocasio. Ocasio lost a very close fight to George Foreman. He'd like that rematch. With this win, he thinks he'll get the rematch. So 12 rounds. This is a big fight. Galento coming off a stoppage of Inga Mario Hansen. That was a surprise, but Galento said... They're all bums to me. Put them up, I'll knock them down. Ocasio, uh, stamina-wise, he'll have an edge. Punching power, big edge for Galento. Chin-wise, slight edge for Ocasio. Galento will cut. Galento's a very dirty fighter. If he has your hurt, he's going to pound away. He's going to wing those punches and try to take you out. Ocasio... Safety first. Caution, caution, caution. If Acasio, his tendency, if, he's, if he goes down, his chin just goes bye bye uh, If he's knocked down after the first knockdown, his chin will go from a 7 to a 4. Acasio likes to work on the outside. Not a very proficient fighter on the inside. Galento, he's going to throw. Everything he throws is hard. He, his hands are usually down by his chest, if not his waist. Acasio likes to keep his hands up. Very classic type of boxer. He will use the jab. He'll throw the right hand. He'll hook to the body. He'll hook to the head. But he wants to stay at distance. Strength edge, I'm going to give it to Tony Galento. Well, the combatants are in the ring. This is the main event. This is what packed Roosevelt Stadium. The very popular two-ton Tony Galento. 
Once again, let's do a quick recap of the bouts that took place before the radio broadcast and the ones we have just called if you're just joining us. Our first bout, Bob Satterfield annihilated New Jersey native Brian O'Malley. I think that's actually how you pronounce it, even though it looks not like that. Stopping him in the first via TKO. Giant Jack O'Halloran, another New Jersey pug, stopped Massachusetts heavyweight, uh, I'm sorry, decisioned, unanimous decisioned Massachusetts heavyweight Tom McNeely. Good job by Giant uh, Jack the Giant, who was in the Superman movie. He was one of the dudes from Krypton. Check it out. No, no lie. It's a fact. Randy Newman, in Night of New Jersey Heavyweights, stopped the son of Tom McNeely, Peter McNeely, when Peter would not answer the bell for round number five. Mel Turnbow beat Mark Gasno, even though by split decision, Gasno scored the only knockdown, but it was Turnbow beating Gasno from pillar to post, hurting Gasno in every round. The referee was almost there to stop it every round, but the former New York Jet lineman from the sack exchange survived and almost pulled off the win. Elijah Tillery fought a draw with Puerto Rican heavyweight Jose Roman. And as we witnessed, Eric Butterbean Ash picks up his first win, stopping fireman Jim Flynn via knockout in round two. Mac Foster, <laughs> in, a, in a bout that looked like he had lost, comes back with a hellacious left hook to starch Bernardo Macardo. The bell rang to end round three, and it ended the night for Bernardo Macardo. He would not gain his feet before the ten count. He is A-OK, -okay, though. Word from the dressing room in back. Now the main event, Tony Galento, Ozzy Acasio. Galento. Actual record, 80 wins, 26 losses, 5 draws, 57 via stoppage. As we stated, Orange, New Jersey. Big puncher. Acasio. Actual record, 23-13-1 with 12 stoppages. Fought Larry Holmes for the heavyweight title. His big wins at heavyweight in actuality. He beat Jimmy Young twice. I believe both times in Puerto Rico. Uh, that, that was a huge upset, the first one. Galento in our universe, our Legends Boxing universe, 3-2. and two. two of his wins have come via stoppage, one by unanimous decision. He's been TKO'd once and lost by unanimous decision. Ozzy Ocasio, two wins, two losses, two draws. Deuces gone wild for Ozzy Ocasio. His wins are by decision, majority and split. His losses by decision, unanimous and majority. He fought George Foreman very tough. Foreman landed more punches, but when Acasio on the referee, on the judges' scorecards, excuse me, in that bout, took all the close rounds. When Foreman won a round, he won it by a greater margin. When Acasio, when the round was close, they gave it to the stylish Puerto Rican. Now for the main event. Both combatants are in the ring. Galento, to the cheers of the crowd, entered the ring. A packed house here at Roosevelt Stadium, Jersey City, New Jersey. He's fighting out of the red corner, very confident. Some say arrogant. Some say belligerent. Ozzy Acasio in the blue corner, just smiling. Galento, nodding his head, glaring at Acasio. As the referee gives the final instructions, you can hear the Spanish interpreter speaking Puerto Rican to Ocasio as the referee does give the instructions. There are no questions from the chief seconds. The pugilists go back to their corners. We await the bell for round number one. It'll be Ocasio trying to stay at bay with his jab, sticking, moving, landing a right now and then. Galento will look to bore forward. The bell for round number one. Galento forces his way inside, holding Ocasio. Now he works his hands free. Galento pounds away at the body. Ocasio moves away. A couple of decent body shots by two-ton Tony Galento. Ocasio at distance. Feints a jab and lands a nice right hook 
followed by a left hook. The left hook to the body, the first right hook to the head of Galento. Galento sneers and smiles at Acasio. Says you punch like a pipsqueak. Acasio's letting his hands go. Beautiful one-two combination. Acasio slides away. That's what Ozzy has to do. Galento bores in, shoving Acasio back into the ropes, banging away a body shot, now up to the head, back to the body, solid left into the ribs, down goes Acasio. No, no, he's up, he's up. They say the knee did not touch. The knee did not touch, but he is hurt. He is hurt against the ropes. I thought his knee touched. Galento looks to load up. Galento bangs with four, five, six hooks. He's just windmilling to the body, then up to the head. Acasio still on those ropes. Now they tie up. Referee breaks them. Acasio moves away from the ropes. Galento plods forward. Acasio throws the jab. Two jabs. Now the right hand. Galento sneers at Acasio. Acasio still throws that jab. Galento dips underneath. Galento started to throw the right, but thought better of it. Final seconds here in round number one. It's Acasio punching at the bell. Beautiful job by Ozzy Acasio. He fainted the jab, landed the right, then come back with a left hook to the jaw of Galento as Galento moved forward. Galento not known for his defense, that's for sure. Well, that's a tough round to score. Do you give it to the power-punching Galento? He did. I thought... Ocasio's knee touched the canvas. The referee did not rule it that way. That body shot took a lot of starch out of Ocasio, though he rebounded quite well, fighting the round to a stalemate. Joining us at ring center, I'm sorry, at ring side, Mr. Wrestling 2. Mr. Wrestling 2 says, just started back playing this great game again, almost finished with HBO Jim Lampley sound mod. Very cool. Yes, you can add sound mods if you don't want to do your own play-by-play -play call uh, in your head or on YouTube. I do play-by-play -play for everything, whether I stream or not. So that was... Who did you give that round one to? I give a slight edge to Galento. Let's see what the ringside score. Ozzy Acasio. The bell for round number two, scheduled for 12, United States Boxing Association title eliminator. There's the bell. Galento moves forward. Acasio moves away. Galento gets past the jab. He's concentrating on the body of Acasio. He lands good, solid body shots with both hands. Lands a 1-2, one, 1-2. Two, one, two. Galento staying in tight. Those body shots might have taken the legs away from Acasio at the moment. Left hook to the body. Right hand to the jaw of Ozzy Ocasio. And that's going to swell up that right eye. Beautiful shot by Galento. Ocasio blinking. He's going to have some vision problems. Galento looking to pounce. Galento throws wildly. Ocasio slides away. Ocasio trying to get action back towards ring center. He's got to stay off those ropes. Galento just boring in, windmill style. Galento opening up with hooks. One, two, three. Nailing Ozzy Ocasio with big hooks. But Ocasio... Able to roll with those punches, it seems. Acasio back at distance. Acasio feints the jab, lands the right into the Labanza. It's a big, girthy area for Tony Galento. Good shot by Ozzy Acasio. Toe to toe exchange. Galento got the better of that. He'll do that all day, all night. Acasio needs to stay away. He has to establish that jab right there. A good one, too. Snapping the head of Tony Galento. A solid jab, a scoring right hand. Beautiful combination by the stylish Puerto Rican, Ozzy Acasio. About 30 seconds to go here in round two. Acasio goes back to a very nice jab and right cross. Galento just sneering at him, but it must be affecting him. Galento's not punching, and his defense doesn't exist. He has his arms uh, down near his trunks. Acasio taking full advantage. Opens up with a four-punch salvo at the bell. The final two punches hooks to the head of Galento. Good round for Ozzy Acasio. Galento started fast. Acasio finished strong. I give that. I think Acasio steals that round. I give round two to Ozzy Acasio. In the Galento corner, they're telling Two Ton Tony, "Let your hands go. Let your hands go." JT 2.0 is here at ringside, stating, "Hello, sports fans. Well, hello to you, Mr. JT." Hope all is well. I haven't seen you in a while, so Happy New Year. 
Sip of water. Round three, the bell. Galento coming out to knock the head off. Ozzy Acasio, and there it is. Right hand, left hook, another right hand, another left hook. Acasio tries to move away. Galento pursues his prey. He is met by the fists of Ozzy Acasio. A quick short left hand caught Galento, stopping his charge just for a moment. Again, Galento charges like a bull. Galento swings madly. Only a grazing right hand catches Ozzy Acasio as he has now become the hare moving away from the hound, Tony Galento. About a minute 49 to go here in round number three. Galento continues with that plotting pressure. Galento lets his hands go, doubling up on the left hook, one into the ribs, then a shot to the top of the head of Acasio. He's blinking. He's having some issues with that right eye. Acasio back with the jab. Then he hooks to the body. A nice little combination by Ozzy Acasio. This is what he did to Foreman. He frustrated Foreman. He did lose that bout. Galento moves in, grabs Acasio, forcing him back towards the rope. Now he hooks with a free hand. One into the ribs, and then a hybrid hook uppercut, snapping the head of the Puerto Rican. Good shot by Galento. Now the referee breaks them. Galento right on top of Acasio. Bangs with hooks to the body, trying to slow down the Puerto Rican. 23 seconds to go here in round three. Both fighters throw and miss. Acasio was throwing and already moving. Back to Puerto Rico on that one. Final seconds. Acasio at the bell. One, two, three, four by Ozzy Acasio. Lands three out of four. Good combination. However, I don't feel it was enough to deter me from giving the round to Galento. We give round three to Galento. Again, our scorecard, the ringside score, both scorecards purely unofficial. Round four coming up. Let's go to the ringside score. 2-1 Acasio. I have it 2-1 Galento. This is a big fight for these two pugilists. USBA title is nothing to sneeze at, and both of them would love to get a crack at it. Smelly Wrestling Geek, how you doing, my friend? Hope all is well. Smelly Wrestling Geek says, I keep waiting for a hockey game to break out. No hockey game breaking out here. First two bouts a little more exciting as those guys were in a stand and bang. Uh, Galento is trying to antagonize Acasio, the Puerto Rican stand and bang, but that's not his style. But just as I say that, Galento has probably used some magic words. Maybe he knows some Spanish swear words. And Acasio is furious. They're going to stand and bang at ring center. Acasio letting his hands go. He misses. Galento dips. Comes up with a good left hook into the jaw of Acasio. But Acasio is going to stand. Acasio is going to bang away. Acasio throwing wildly. Galento's gotten to his head. Galento looks to counter. Short right hand landed by Galento. Shocking to say that. This is what Galento wants. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. This is not where Ocasio wants to be. Now Ocasio on the inside lands a 1-2, then the left uppercut. It was a good scoring blow. Lifted the head of two-ton Tony. Galento comes back, bangs the body. When he does that, he likes to hold on to his opponent's arm and then bangs away with the free hand. It was the right hand that was free. Galento shoves Ocasio away. Right hook, left hook to the jaw of Ozzy Ocasio. Ocasio backs up, now moves forward. Ocasio throws. Ocasio misses. He is very frustrated as Galento is chirping at him. Ocasio fires again and misses. Galento smirking, smiling, sticking his chin out. Dangerous. Now they move forward again. And at the bell, Ocasio decides to take the punishment to the underbelly of Tony Galento. He landed a couple of good shots there. Galento played a bit in that round. He shouldn't take any pugilist lightly, and that's what they're telling Galento in his corner. Galento says, I got this bum, this pipsqueak. He's done, he's done. Through the Puerto Rican interpreter in the Ozzy Acasio corner, his cornermen are none too happy with the tactics he used in round number four. They want him to stay on the outside, use the jab. They, they're they working the cut near the right eye of Acasio. They've done a fairly good job with that. The USBA title, a Puerto Rican can win the USBA title because it's a United States protectorate. 
So, in other words, a Canadian cannot win the USBA title because they're not in the United States. A Canadian can win the North American title when they had such titles. I think they still have them. They have a gazillion titles, so I'm assuming. So the North American title consisted of Canada, the United States, and any of its protectorates in the North American hemisphere. In that hemisphere, excuse me. Mexico and parts of Central America. and The islands in the area, too. And I could miss something here and there. The United States title consisted of continental United States, Hawaii, Alaska, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, I believe. I believe those were the territories. So. The bell for round number five. Acasio staying at distance. Galento rushes at him. Galento actually throws a jab but missed with a wild right hand. Galento bores forward. Galento lets his hands go, concentrating the shots to the body. Acasio moving, moving, moving. Galento did catch him with a couple of grazing body blows. Both fighters throw and miss. About a minute 52 to go here in round five. Acasio lands two solid jabs, but no right hand. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange as Galento forced Acasio back towards the ropes. Both men fire, land, and Acasio moves away. He is on his bicycle. Now he stands to look to punch. Jab, jab, no right hand, though. Grazing jab, scoring jabs by Acasio. Big right hand missed by Galento. Left right missed by Acasio. Acasio very cautious, going defense first here. 40 seconds to go in round number five. Galento forcing Acasio back towards the rope. Acasio trying to move away, but Galento bangs away with hard body shots. He nearly doubled over Acasio. 10 seconds to go. Toe to toe exchange as Acasio gets trapped on the ropes. But he did fire back. He did fire back. Another close round. Do you give it to the aggressor, Tony Galento? I do. D. Scott Howard, the GOAT Whisperer, has joined us here from Roosevelt Stadium. How you doing, D. Scott Howard? So, D. Scott Howard, rest, Mr. Wrestling 2, Smelly Wrestling Geek, Legends Sports Universe. Captain Carl has joined us. Roger Ramjet, who won money on the Mac Foster fight, even though he thought he was going to lose it. Steeler Fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Alan Berry, Bernard Strom. Again, we all wish Bernard Strom a speedy, quick recovery to his back surgery. Avengi Crosby is also here. Six rounds down. I'm sorry, five rounds down. Seven to go. Ringside score gave that round to Galento. I have 48-47, but I have 48-47 for Galento. The ringside score has it 48-47 for Acacia. Crowd is a buzz. It's been an entertaining fight. Here's the bell for round number six. This is a United States Boxing Association title eliminator. The winner to get a crack at George Foreman. At least that's what the contract says. The bell for round six. Acasio stays at distance. Galento tries to move forward, but Acasio is now letting his hands go. He's letting his hands go. Two jabs and a solid right hand. Stops the advance of Galento, who sneers at Acasio. Now Galento rushes forward. Windmilling hooks to the head and body. The body shots landed. The, the, the hooks to the head. Acasio was able to parry them away. Acasio moving, moving, moving. Now the jab. Then the hook to the body. He really set that up nice. The left jab, right hook to the body. Good job by Ozzy Acasio. He's going defense first. He's throwing one, two. He doesn't want to throw more than that. Acasio, one jab, two jab, moves away. About a minute 30 to go here in round number six. Acasio really using that jab quite well, deterring the attack, keeping Galento out of rhythm. Good jabs by Ozzy Acasio. Galento again just windmills forward, lets his hands go. One, two, three. Two body shots and a wild uppercut. The uppercut is grazing. It scores, but Acasio moves, moves, moves. Under a minute to go here in round number six. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, and Acasio actually got the better of it. Galento did land grazingly, but he was moving forward, and Acasio caught him coming in. And that will generate more power to a light-hitting Ozzy Ocasio. 22 seconds left in round six. Acasio very confident now. He is jabbing and hooking now. He's staying around. He's hanging around a little bit more. The hooks are to the underbelly of Galento. Galento slowing down, breathing heavily. And Acasio looks to take advantage. Two jabs and a solid right hand. Nail Galento. Galento 
Blood, blood as he goes back to this corner under his left eye. So Ozzy Acasio really got a nice rhythm from the outside, and that's what his corner has been telling him. Use the jab. Galento has no defense, no defense. His defense is just hit me. But he can swat, and that's what you have to watch out for from two-ton Tony Galento. That is the best round for Ozzy Acasio. Galento, they quickly go to work on the cut under the left eye. It doesn't seem too bad. They quickly get the the apparatus, the, 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 the press on there, you know, the things that look like uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of it, but they're trying to get that coagulant. They're pressing that cut underneath, squeezing it together to get that coagulant in there to try to slow down the blood. That was a good round for Ozzy Acasio. I have it even after six. How do you see it at ringside? Galento is fatigued. His power is going to wane. Now round seven. Acasio seems confident. Both men have issues around their eyes. The bell for round number seven. Acasio will stay on the outside. Galento slowly moves forward. And a beautiful four-punch combination by Acasio. He's standing his ground a little more. He scores and he moves away. A one-two to the head. Then a one-two to the body. D. Scott Howard saying super glue. Uh, it could be super glue that they're using on Tony Galento. It's Acasio throwing the jab. Galento parries the punch away. Oh my God, that's a miracle. Galento dips, charges forward. He's throwing. Missed the right, but the left hook into the body landed. The left hook into the ribs of Acasio did land by Galento. The right hand missed by a mile. About a minute 40 to go in round number seven. Galento continues to press wildly, only scoring one or two hooks. Throwing punches, but not landing. The hooks to the body are landing, trying to slow down Acasio. The Hound chasing the hare. Galento, hook to the body, right hand to the jaw of Ozzy Acasio. Acasio, he absorbed it pretty well. He might have rolled with the punch there. A minute to go here in round number seven. Acasio, one jab, two jabs, no right hand. Very close round. Acasio again punches. He fainted the jab, lands the right hook to the body, comes back with a left hook, but he was already moving back. Didn't connect solidly with Galento. Acasio again faints the jab, lands the hook underneath. Nice job by Ozzy Acasio. Closing seconds. It's Acasio. One, two, three. Snapping the head of Galento. Galento is frustrated. That confidence is no longer there from Tony Galento. The sh uh, the, the uh, his confidence is definitely waning. He's blinking, complaining about the cut under the eye. He's telling the ref it was a butt. It was in our where we're sitting from, calling this radio broadcast. It did not look like a butt to me. It's a good referee in the ring. Through the interpreter in the Ozzy Acasio corner, they're very happy with what Acasio is doing. They want Acasio to be careful, though. He's starting to open up just a bit. They want him to use the jab and the straight right. I give that round to Acasio. I now have it 4-3, Ozzy Acasio. Remember, this is scheduled for 12, a title eliminator. The winner, contractually, whether they will, is to get a shot at George Foreman for Foreman's United States Boxing Association title, a stepping stone to the world title shot. Ringside score, 66-67, Ozzy Ocasio. So we're at the same uh, score. We just got there slightly different. A slight delay as they wipe up some water in the Galento corner. Here's the bell for round number eight. Galento, tired. He's circling from the outside. So is Ocasio. Galento windmills, lands a shot, a grazing shot. It was a wild shot. It did get through. It grazed uh, Acasio. Acasio, more the stylish, more the classic fighter, lands two jabs. Again, they circle. They circle one another. They're just circling. Galento's arms down to about his uh, waist, looking to land something solid. While he does that, it's Acasio putting the jab out there. Two jabs, and then Acasio staying in danger. He lands the hook to the body. It was a right hook. Galento really slowing down a lot. Acasio picking up the pace. Two jabs land by Ozzy Acasio. The Puerto Rican looking very good here in round number eight. About a minute 20 to go. 
And Galindo starts to rough up Acasio, driving him into the ropes and letting his hands go, hitting him, rabbit punching him, using his elbows, every dirty tactic that he knows, possibly even a low blow there. Referee admonishes Galento. A minute 12 to go in round eight. Again, Galento tries to rough up Acasio. Acasio will have none of it. Stays away. Under a minute. 44 seconds. Galento moves forward. He's caught by a lead left hook, then a right hook. Beautiful shots to the head of Galento by Ozzy Acasio. 30 seconds to go in round eight. Galento moves forward. Acasio is easily able to tie him up. And now Galento is so tired, he allows the referee to break them. 10 seconds to go. At the bell, it's Ozzy Acasio opening up with a four-punch combination. Snapping the head of two-ton Tony Galento. It was a jab, right hand, left hook, right hook. Everything to the head of Galento. Galento fading fast now. Acasio, they've done a good job with the cut near the right eye of Ozzy Acasio. Galento still complaining about the cut under his left eye, saying it was a headbutt. Tony's got to concentrate on, on the bout here. We have him slip sliding away in the uh, song lyrics of Paul Simon to the nearest destination. And that's the destination of losing. Acasio seems very confident in his corner when he lacked that confidence in the earlier rounds. But he's in a rhythm. He has timed Galento, worn down Galento. Round nine, the bell. Galento coming all out, looking to bang out Acasio. Acasio starting to breathe heavier. That body work by Two-Ton Tony starting to pay dividends. As I say that, Galento moves forward, but he's not punching. He's caught by a jab right hand and another right hand. Now Galento is cut near the right eye. He has suffered two cuts, one under the left, one near the right. Galento inf infuriated, charges forward, throwing wildly, not landing effectively. The best punch there was a left hook into the ribs of Acasio. Acasio trying to get back at distance. He's no longer as fleet as foot. Galento cutting the ring off. Galento continues to concentrate his shots at the body. About a minute 57 to go. As I say that, Galento moves forward. Jab, right hand, left hook, another right hand. Landing by Ozzy Acasio. Galento's starting to get chopped up. His face looks like a meat grinder. Swelling, blood. It's not looking good for two-ton Tony Galento. He's not punching. He's not punching. But Ozzy Acasio certainly is. Acasio starting to move forward, bipping and bopping, banging away body and head of Tony Galento. Galento looks to fire. Galento, right hand, left hook. Solid shots, but the, some of the steam, a lot of the steam is gone from two-ton Tony Galento. Under a minute to go here in round nine. Galento again fires away, misses the wild right, but a good left hook under the elbow into the ribs of the Puerto Rican Ozzy Acasio. 23 seconds left in round number nine. Galento left right to the body, left right to the head. Acasio felt those shots. Seconds remaining. And it's Galento with the low blow. And again, the referee admonishes a two-ton Tony Galento. The Puerto Rican fans here at Roosevelt Stadium boo Galento. With that, what I thought was a good round by Ozzy Acasio, he started to fade as Galento did land some solid body shots and that confidence he had seems to have gone. That close round, a fatiguing, bloody, swollen Galento, I give it to Tutan Tony. The ringside scorer doesn't agree with me. After nine, the ringside scorer has it 87 84, mine is 86, 85, Acasio. So we still have Acasio ahead, both of us. Again, our scorecard's unofficial. I have Acasio by one point, the ringside score by two. The only scores that count are the fists of Galento and Acasio, and if they don't resolve it, the three scoring judges here at ringside at Roosevelt Stadium. Jim L., how you doing? He's joined us here at ringside. Hope all is well. We have Jim L., D. Scott Howard, Captain Carl 8, Mr. Wrestling 2, Smelly Wrestling Geek, JT 2.0, Legends of Sports Universe, check out that wonderful channel. Roger Ramjet, who won money on Mac Foster when he knocked out Bernardo Macardo in a thrilling three-round war. Steeler fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Alan Barry, Bernard Strom. We all wish Bernard a quick 
recovery and Avengi Crosby. The bell for round number 10. And they've told Galento, you got to do something. They might stop this fight. Galento charges out the best he can towards Acasio. Acasio tries to stay on the outside. And Acasio. Oh, wow. Acasio with the low blow. It's good for the goose. It's good for the gander. Referee admonishes him. But that slows down two-ton Tony. But Acasio looks to throw and throw hard. Tony shoves him away. Punches did not land by Acasio. And again, Acasio looks to stand his ground. Lands a right hand. It was a lead right. Missed with the left hook to the jaw of Galento. But Acasio, two jabs. Now getting the range for that right hand. Oh boy, Galento's face is a mess. Blood near both eyes. Lumped up near both eyes. It's Acasio taking advantage of it. Two jabs and a right hand catch Galento. Galento backs up, now moves forward. Galento fires wildly. That was a big combination. Galento was able to push Acasio off balance and he banged away with hooks to the head, wild hooks to the head. Then back to the body, back to the head, forcing Acasio near the ropes. Acasio slides away from the ropes. Under, under a minute to go here in round number 10. Action moves back to ring center. 33 seconds to go. It's Acasio throwing the jab in the right hand, but he's a little more reluctant. He misses both shots. 18 seconds to go. Toe to toe exchange. Galento just came in firing. Acasio in survival mode stood his ground. He had no choice. They both landed effectively. I give that round to Acasio, though. Galento goes to his stool, plops down. Referee comes over, checking on Tutan Tony. His face is a mess. His face is just a mess. Cuts near both eyes, swelling near both eyes. Acasio did uh, sustain an abrasion near the right eye that they've done a very good job with. The, the corner of Galento has done yeoman's work on those cuts and swelling, but it's just so much. I think Galento, with six minutes to go, in my eyes, either has to win these two rounds big. He needs to score at least a knockdown. Uh, probably he might need a knockout. This is a USBA title eliminator. Winner to get a crack contractually to George Foreman. Whether that will happen or not, we don't know. The bell for round number 11. Galento looks to move inside. Acasio stays at distance, but Acasio slowed down. Galento gets in tight. Bangs away with really hard body shots. Five of them get through. Unbelievable. I, I don't know where he pulled that out of. He just dug deep and just windmilled, shoving Acasio into the ropes, but Acasio moves away from the ropes. Acasio misses the right and left. It was a lead right, left hook, missed by Ozzy Acasio. Ozzy, those body shots took it out of Ozzy. He's not moving, and Galento looks to hook. Right hand miss. The overhand right miss, but the left into the ribs of Acasio landed. Under two minutes ago here in round 11, Galento banging away and banging away hard. Body then up to the head, back down to the body. Those are hooks, wild, wild hooks, uppercuts. He's throwing everything. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Galento got the better of it. Big round for Galento. About a minute to go here in round 11. Galento winds up. Overhand right clips Acasio, then the left into the ribs. Acasio looks to fire back. A jab in the right hand. The right hand was grazing. Galento looking for the knockout. Galento lands on overhand right, but missed with the left hook. Both shots were aimed at the head. Acasio, jab, right hand, catching Galento, moving forward at the bell. But that was not enough to win the round for Ozzy Acasio, the heavyweight from Puerto Rico. We give that round to Galento. Galento dug deep. He needed that round. Three more minutes to go. Three more minutes to go in this United States Boxing Association title eliminator. The winner, contractually, is to get a shot at George Foreman in the future for Foreman's United States Boxing Association heavyweight title. That is a huge stepping stone for a possible world title shot. Our current world heavyweight champion, the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis. Acasio lost a controversial decision to George Foreman. And again, if you look at it, if you go back, Foreman, when he won his rounds, he won them big. I had Foreman winning, personally. When Acasio won his rounds, or they were close, the judges seemed to give it to Acasio. Now, Foreman still won the bout. But there's controversy there. Final three minutes. Ringside score has it. 105-104. Ozzy Acasio. 
I have it the exact same score. Here we go. Is there a draw in the offering? Can Galento drop Acasio and sneak out a win? Will Acasio catch a tiring, bloody, swollen, battered Galento and drop him? Fighters come to ring center. There's all kinds of goop all over Galento's face. Galento, as they go to touch gloves, shoves Acasio away. There's the bell. Well, the bell will be here in a moment. There's a delay. Now the referee, come on, call for the bell. There's the bell for round number 12. This is it. Acasio staying way away, as much away, far away from Galento, using the jab and move, move, move. Galento moving forward, but slowly. Galento cuts the distance, missed with the right, but lands a left hook to the jaw and side of the cranium, cranium of Acasio. Galento again is able to move inside on Acasio, Acasio trying to stay at distance. The legs just won't allow it. Galento too wild with those shots. Too wild. He missed both the right and left. He's throwing one, two shots at a time now. The windmilling is gone. Both fighters clash head with the roughhouse tactics of Galento. No, no wear or tear any worse uh, for either. But that, that face of Galento is a mess. Galento... Now he goes back to just windmilling punches, banging the body, then up to the head. But the power is not there for Tony. He's trying to out-hustle Acasio. Acasio, in his mind, must feel he's won it. He's not throwing punches. It's Galento. There's the overhand right by Tony Galento. Galento actually fainted the left from his hip. And then Booyah with the right hand. Had Galento had some starch on, he might have dropped Acasio. They're screaming from the Acasio corner. Punch. Acasio faints, the jab lands a hook, but he's already moving away. It was a grazing right hook as Galento moved forward. Both fighters jostle for position. Galento breaks away from Acasio. Acasio moves away from Galento. 20 seconds to go in this bout. It's Acasio at the bell with a 1-2 combination. The jab landed, the right hand did not. We're going to go to the scorecards. This could be a draw, folks. This could be a draw. Galento did not land much, but he pressed, pressed, pressed. And I tell you, when you're trying to close out a bout, it's okay to use your boxing ability. But it was more like Acasio was running away, in my opinion. I have given the last round to Galento. I have it dead even. The ringside scorer has given the round 12 to Galento. He has it dead even. Now we'll go to what some people say, the three blind mice at times. The official scoring judges... All certified by the state of New Jersey. We're at lovely Roosevelt Stadium in Jersey City. What a fun radio fight card we have given you. There are more fights than just the three, but those were non-radio fights. The scorecards are being collected. I have it a draw. Galento, a bloody mess. Still complaining that he was headbutted. I don't know what Tony's. I just didn't see it. Now the scorecards given to the referee. The referee has now handed them over to the ring announcer. The official result. 116-113 Acasio. 116-114 Galento. 114-114. The fight has been declared a draw. A smattering of boos. Here at Roosevelt Stadium, the Galento fans feel that two-ton Tony won. The fans of the Puerto Rican pugilist Ozzy Acasio feel that the stylish Puerto Rican was able to pull out the decision. Well, one judge saw it for Acasio, 116-113. Another judge saw it for Galento, 116-114. And the third judge saw it even as we did and the ringside scorer. 114-114. The fight has been declared a draw. So disappointment for both pugilists. No title shot against George Foreman. At least contractually. But maybe Foreman takes both of them on. A rematch with Acasio and a first meeting with Tony Galento. Let's go to the fight report. Can't get any closer than that. Punch points favored Acasio by two. 68-66. That is a draw right there. So a very entertaining fight. It was not 
I mean, Acasio did stay at distance, did sort of run at times, but he punched enough. And I think if Acasio, I don't know, if he had to do it over again, would have been a lot more active in round 12 against a bloody, swollen, tired Galento. But I, he feared Galento's power. He feared Galento's, he really needed round 12. I mean, he was tired. Those body shots by Galento. Galento, he throws wide. He has sneaky speed, and his power is thudding. Just ask Joe Lewis. In reality, he dropped Joe Lewis. Then Lewis knocked the crap out. But he did drop the Brown Bomber. D. Scott Howard, reporting at ringside, says, Only the bookies are happy with this one. You are correct. So that was a fun fight card. Smelly Wrestling Geek. Coming up with an innovation here for boxing. Triple threat boxing match. Foreman, Galento, Ocasio. You know, we could do that. We could do something like that in Fire Pro Wrestling. We could do that. I got to write that down. I'm going to write that down and see if I have Ozzy Ocasio. I know I have Galento and I know I have Foreman. We could do a triple, we could do a triple threat match bare knuckle. Wrestling bare knuckle sort of MMA style. I like that. So let's just write that down. Triple threat match. I like it. Fire Pro Wrestling. We haven't done any Fire Pro Wrestling in a while. Fire Pro Wrestling. Galento. Acasio. I like the buy a vowel, please. And Foreman. We could do that. I got to see if I have an Ozzy Ocasio boxer. We'll do it sort of MMA, MMA wrestling style. We, we fooled around with that before. I like that. I like where your head's at, Smelly Wrestling Geek. I like it. I like it a lot. So there's your fight card. And we're going to go through the results one last time. The non-radio fights that you had to be live here at Roosevelt Stadium to see. Bob Satterfield stopped Brian O'Malley. I, and I believe that's how you pronounce that name um, in one round TKO. G uh, Jack the Giant O'Halloran decisioned Tom McNeely, the heavyweight from Massachusetts. So New Jersey got a win there. Randy Newman stopped Peter McNeely, the son of Tom McNeely, when Peter would not answer the bell for round five, referee stopped it. Mel Turnbow, another favorite son of New Jersey pugilistic history, beat Mark Gastineau. He nearly stopped Gastineau in every round, including the round he went down in. But Gastineau survived, only to lose a split decision to Mel Turnbow. Elijah Tillery drew with another Puerto Rican heavyweight, Jose Roman. Eric Butterbean Esch. Uh, Jim Flynn, the fireman, said he was going to take it to the fat bastard. Well, he took it to the fat bastard, and he got took. Eric Butterbeanesh knocked out the fireman, Jim Flynn, in the second. Mac Foster, Bernardo Mercado. Foster on the verge of defeat, being knocked down in the first for a seven count. Being really beaten up, even though he scored some punches in the second. It was Bernardo Mercado, then Mercado looking to take... Mercado in the first two minutes of round three looked like he was going to take Mac Foster out. And then Foster fainted the right, landed the booyah left hook on the chin of Bernardo Mercado. You can count to 4,005. The fight was over. And as we witnessed, Galento Ocasio battle to a very fun competitive draw. So that's it, folks. Fight night in New Jersey from Roosevelt Stadium. More boxing to come with Glory Days Boxing. If you have Glory Days Boxing, Anthony has added a uh, quick fight sheet. That's not the right terminology, but a way to play the fights quickly if you want to do a fight card. And then, you know, or you can do all your fights that way. And that's out for free via PDF. A quick play chart, I believe that's what it's called. Um, Glory Days Boxing can be purchased at a reasonable price, whether you get a PDF or the printed copy. Excellent game. So there's going to be more boxing on the channel, more Glory Days boxing on the channel. We'll continue with our Legends of Boxing on the channel also. We're going to bring you some uh, 
uh, title bout two on the PC on the channel also. And if I have an Ozzy Ocasio character in Fire Pro Wrestling, we're going to bring you that triple threat MMA boxing slash wrestling match between Galento, Ocasio, and Foreman. I like that. I like that a lot. And that was Smelly Wrestling Geek will be the promoter or the matchmaker for that. I like that. I have to see if we have. I think I have an Ozzy Ocasio or I can find one. Smelly Wrestling Geek, as I'm writing in my notebook. Matchmaker. I love that. It's fun. So there you have it. I'd like to thank Captain Carl 8, our good friend Bob. Steeler Fan 1933, our good friend Matt. Smelly Wrestling Geek, thank you. D. Scott Howard, the Goat Whisperer, thank you. Jim L., as always, thank you, thank you, thank you, and hope all is well to Jim L. Mr. Wrestling 2, thank you very much. As he's working on Legends of Boxing, he's almost finished with his HBO Jim Lampley sound mod. So check out his wonderful channel and check out that mod. I believe if he loads it up, I think it's on uh, Sports Replays or possibly it might even be on the Legends of Boxing Facebook group page, which is Summit, right? The Summit. JT 2.0, thank you very much. Legends Sports Universe, we hope to have him on. I'm hoping next week for a chat with Al. Check out that wonderful channel. He does a lot of creative projects. Roger Ramjet, thank you very much. He won money on Mac Foster. Alan Barry, thank you. Bernard Strom, thank you. And a speedy recovery to your back surgery. Avengi Crosby, thank you very much. I believe we got everybody. So thank you for your time. If you enjoyed the stream, it's very important to hit that like button. It helps with the channel being discovered. It helps with all of our channels in our sports sim community to be discovered so if you're enjoying someone's stream and you can please hit that like button for myself and for the others who create content for our enjoyment and also your enjoyment also if you if you have not sub please do so that's another important thing sub hit the bell for notification when we go live or we upload share if you're on social media but most importantly, come back, enjoy, enjoy the chat, enjoy the other channels. Stay safe, be smart, treat people the way you're going to be treated. God bless. I love you all. We will see you back here again very, very soon. Peace.